you, you also have have done a good job of like um, you didn't realize how much you had grown, but you also had a ton of new business influx that was rolling in. Is it a length of time? Is it the marketing you're doing? Is it the trust you're building in your community? Is it all the above? Is it certain things like wh why do you see an influx of new business? Yeah, they need help and it's timing and all that. But like you see it, a, a huge influx of business during the end of the year, the last you know two, three, four months. Like wh why and how did you get to where that's the case? What is up? Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We just came off 8%, and we have the Medicare Wonder Woman hanging out with us. She owns Cannibal Insurance Solutions from Stephenville, Texas. Please welcome back to the channel, Rebecca Davis. Hell yeah. 8%. <laughs> Show me some 8% love, everyone. Wasn't I that freaking that. badass? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, you rocked it, by the way. Like You were one of our first speakers on the opening morning. And for those that don't know Rebecca, like you need to be following her. She, she generates a ton of leads organically, even through TikTok, your grassroots marketing. She went from like sub six figure insurance agent or whatever, however she did her first year to now she runs, owns and runs a seven figure agency with a team and agents and staff and all this stuff. And like, she is a badass. That is for sure. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I do work hard and I enjoy it. I enjoy what I do for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Wh which parts do you not enjoy? Let's get those out of the way. Uh, crazy people, yeah. crazy clients, crazy people in general. <laughs> so so agents do get to look forward to that, to where there's going to be some crazy people, you know? Absolutely. There, there is always some <laughs> yeah. and some like, just epic crazy clients like you can't even imagine some of the crap <laughs> yeah do, do you do you work with everyone or do you turn some people away oh no i have fired some in the past i you know in the beginning you got to work with everyone right because you got to make a living yeah but once you get to a certain point you're like i don't have to work with you if i don't want to and in fact Ooh. everybody can go read it there's a google review on us right now where a guy like went stupid on a Google review, but he'd already been stupid on my staff. And you go read my Google review, you will die laughing because basically I told him, um, I have a right as a business owner to choose who I work with. And I basically decided we are not going to service you. And I've told my staff that. So that's why you're not getting responses. And if you would like to talk about this as an adult, you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly. But otherwise, we're not going to service you. <laughs> wow. Yep. That I mean, takes some guts to get to that point too, you know? You know, at this point, I'm protecting my people. Yeah. You know, my staff is way more valuable than one crazy client. Amen to that. Yeah. And I'm not going to let them get run over. No, the, yeah, they're so much, so important. Uh, when you look back on your journey, what do you think is one thing that you've, or, or a few things that you've done really well? that has allowed you to be so wildly successful? Well, I mean, work ethic, I think that always gets talked about. I grew up on a ranch, yeah. we know that. That was drilled into me, everything came first. And ultimately that's really the number one thing. Yeah. Um, because I've never been you know, in this situation before, I've never ran an insurance agency before, I've never had 14 employees before. You know, there's a learning curve to all of it. Yes. Right? And I'm by no means perfect. I've made a lots of mistakes, especially yeah. with people, um, you know, with team members and, you know, just stuff. There's so much to learn and it's been definitely learning. I learn every day. I think I'm a much better leader today than I was six years ago. In fact, yep. I know I am. I don't think I am. I know I am. I, I yeah. handle things very differently today than I did six years ago. So that's a constant learning curve. But ultimately, the number one reason why I'm successful, I guarantee it, is because I'm willing to work hard. Yeah. And I believe in what I'm doing. True, you definitely do. Um, what, 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 what do you? Speaking of mistakes, what do you think is the biggest mistake that you've made along the way that you that you that that, that you learned from? This is good, by the way. If you guys, if you guys watching this later, throw in comments below if you love that question. Okay. Oh God, Cody, just like shoot me now. Um, trusting the wrong people, for sure. 
That's good. Um, and all this, all different aspects of trusting their own people, right? It's not like at one specific type of person. I mean, this is amazing. It's amazing who you think's in your corner and then ultimately is not. And surprise like that. Yeah. 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 Just in a heartbeat. Um, that's probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, not growing fast enough, hiring fast enough. Okay. So, is another so good one. Talk about that because there's going to be a bunch of agents here and be like, you know what? I'm scared to hire. I'm scared to invest. I'm making 60, 80, 100, 120 grand, 140 grand, whatever. But, but I'm, I feel like I'm, or I'm making 200, but I'm holding myself back. But I, cause I've seen that a lot over the years. So last year um, is actually a really good example of this. I actually had seven people, I think going into open enrollment internally. Okay. And I thought for sure going in, we were good. Um, I did not realize in the eight months before open enrollment, I mean, I knew, but I guess I just didn't realize how much we actually had grown mm. um, in those last eight months. And I did not have enough people, not even close to enough people to handle just our current clients and then the volume of new business coming in. It was a nightmare. It was a shit show. I ain't gonna lie. I, I had to learn automation <laughs> to even uh, attempt to salvage things. I mean, we ended up okay. We obviously ended up okay that last year is when we actually broke the seven figure mark. But if I had more people, yeah, I'd probably be, you know, that much closer to eight figures than I am today because that's my next goal, right? Eight figures. Yep. And so this year we went on a hiring spree this year about three months ago, not wanting to be in the same situation I was in last year. And we hired six more people because so we doubled our staff size. That's awesome. That's so cool. And, and right now I'm over staff. I know I am. I'm looking for things for people to do. I mean, it's the summertime. It's a little slower and ultimately we're training. Yeah. But I know in another 30 days, we're going to have more to do than they know what to do with. And, you know, we're kind of bringing those new people in slowly. So they kind of get a feel before basically all heck breaks loose. Yes. Yes. Also, if an agent's like new to the game and they don't know what you mean by all heck breaks loose and like mm -hmm. the end of the year and these appear, the open enrollment periods and all this kind of stuff, um, explain that. So, okay. Everybody is familiar with like tax season, right? With what, accountants and CPAs go through because they only have, you know, um, well, they have from like January to April 15th to get your taxes done, yeah. which is ultimately four months. So take tax season, divide it by two in time. And in fact, we have to deal with everybody in the country, not just people who file taxes, mm. because a lot of people don't have to file taxes. Your seniors don't, a lot of them don't file taxes, right? So we have to deal with way more people in half the time. I mean, it, it's like going to the, maybe the state fair and you literally have to talk to everybody on those grounds in the next six hours. <laughs> Which is insane. Every day for 45 days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a really good visual, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good visual. I mean, we're blessed to have it. I'm not complaining, right? That's when you make hay. That, yeah. You know, if you're a new agent, balls to the walls, this is when you're going to make hay. Um, and you just need to get after it and feel blessed doing it and work those long hours, work till midnight, work till two. I don't care if you can fill that calendar, fill that calendar, right? Yes. Because this is when you can make the money and change your family's life, especially if you're a new agent. 100%. Yep. You, you also have, have done a good job of like, um, you didn't realize how much you had grown, but you also had a ton of new business influx that was rolling in. Um, is it a length of time? Is it the marketing you're doing? Is it the trust you're building in your community? Is it all the above? Is it certain things? Like why do you see an influx of new business? Yeah, they need help and it's timing and all that. But like you see a, a huge influx of business during the end of the year, the last, you know, two, three, four months. Like wh why and how did you get to where that's the case? Well, the end of the year, people are getting smart. They're starting to know these enrollment periods, right? They know to reach out. Yeah. But the influx of business didn't happen at the end of the year. What put us in the trouble was the influx of business we had from January to August. Because we were writing so much Got it. through them. 
and didn't realize, I mean, I knew the numbers, but I guess you, you don't, you don't sit there and do the math on that and then add it to how many you already have in the book and then divide it by the amount of people you have. I probably should have, but I didn't and realized yep. that we don't have enough people to handle all this. But sure. I mean, to answer your question though, it's all of the above. I mean, it's local branding. It's just been doing this a long enough time now where, you know, we get referrals like you can imagine. Um, we do ACA and both Medicare and your ACA people age in, right? So they're aging in. So we're flipping those people from an ACA plan to Medicare year round. Um, they tell their friends, you know, we have billboards everywhere. We're social media everywhere. I talk about it on stages, not just insurance stages, but I get in front of other groups of audiences to talk about it outside of the insurance space. So people are aware of what's out there, the changes. There's been so many changes the last couple of years between Medicaid mm. unwinding, COVID coming down. Now we have the Medicare drug tobacco that's up for grabs. You know, what are they going to do with the prescriptions in 2025? You know, there's just all these changes. And we talk about it insurance space with each other, but it affects ultimately their clients. So we go out into the community and any other place I can get onto any type of platform to talk about it because it affects them ultimately. And they need to know about it. Yeah. Yeah, they do for sure. Um, hey, but that's, I mean, it's also cool that you've got, you've got a point now where you just have, have done enough marketing, not that you're ever going to stop because you see it, you know, like, but, but you've done enough over the years and it's just been a snowball you know, in your community for and around the country with TikTok and all this other stuff you're doing, you know, which has been nice. I think a lot of people don't realize when we talk about grassroots, because everybody knows I'm known for grassroots, but at the end of the day, the grassroots is ultimately branding, long-term branding, yeah. long-term marketing, long-term branding. It's not just about, you know, being in that senior center today or being in a retail location this week. It is about being in front of people so they know your face, they know your name, they know your company. Yes. And it's the long approach, but ultimately, I mean, it is branding, right? You become a, a actual brand and not just the person selling insurance. Yes. Yeah. Which can really set you apart. You know, what, what's some tips you would, you would give, but then we'll transition to win and what you're doing for women and the retreat and all that. But like when you talk about brand, some of the tips there, what comes to mind? Just, I mean, if you're a single person and you don't really have an agency, then you're branding this, right? Your face. Your face needs to be on everything. I don't care what it is. If it's on the toilet paper in the bathroom at a CVS, get on the toilet paper in the bathroom at CVS, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Get your face anywhere you can get it. Um, in any business, you know, chamber events, lawyers. Uh, doctor's offices, other insurance agencies like PNC, if you're doing health and Medicare, um, it does not matter. Just get your face out there. And then if you're a company, then brand the company, right? You need your logos everywhere. You need to sponsor things. Companies are very known for sponsoring things like kids events. We had an ad in the movie theater that ran a, like in three or four movie theaters within like an hour of here, you know, let's talk about Cannonball right before they played the movie. They had our little That's commercial cool. go up. Um, so depending on what you're trying to drive traffic to, if you're trying to drive traffic to you personally, you need to brand you. If you're trying to drive traffic to an agency location, like a team, then you need to brand the team. Because what happens when you brand yourself, and I know I've been there because I still brand myself because mm -hmm. um, I am the Medicare Wonder Woman, right? They only want to deal with you and you have to train them that, the team can help them, not just yes. you. So yes. that part's a little different with an agency and that part's been different trying to transition from for the clients, you know, getting them to realize that I have an entire team I've trained and they can get to you much faster than I can. And if it's something they can't handle, believe me, I will know about it immediately and we'll get involved. Totally, yeah. And when you're trying to scale, it's like, man, it's so important to not have to do it all. Yeah, it's so good. Um, for those that don't know, what is win? And that's, W I I N women in insurance niches. So nice. it is a private group for ladies only that me and Faye Horton run together. We started it a little over three years ago. Now we Love saw Faye. a need in the play in the market uh, where women just needed a place to like collaborate and to talk and to share ideas, um, like-minded ideas, right? I love the men. 
We've yes. had so many men be so supportive and even supportive with our win group. And it's been a major blessing, but you know what? There's things we talk about that ultimately men don't want in that conversation. Let's be honest. <laughs> True. I mean, we talk, we train on insurance products. We train on business strategy. We train on marketing, branding. I mean, all the things around business, but then we also train on specific like women's mindsets and running a family and taking care of the kids and, you know, taking care of a spouse or being a single parent. You know, there's a lot of those other idiosyncrasies that really fall on women's shoulders more so than men. Not saying some men don't have that, but let's be honest, most of that falls on the women. Yeah. And it gives us a place to, you know, to figure out how to balance all that. Yeah. And we have a, a group. You can go to uh, clubwin2eyes.com and check us out. And we also have a retreat that comes up every February that's open to the public. As long as you're a woman and have an insurance license, you're more than welcome to come. And that's clubwinretreat.com, two eyes. You can check it out. And it's all inclusive. A lot of people don't realize that when you buy your ticket, you get your room, you get your meals, you get your alcohol, you get your training. It's all together. So that's so cool. Yeah. And the ticket prices are in incredibly affordable at the same time. Yes. Price. When you realize what it's all included, there's, I mean, honestly, not another conference out there, even the free ones that no. get as much fun. Because even the free ones, you still got to pay for your room. You still got to pay for your food. You still got to, you know, pay for all the things. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yep. Which is amazing. Um, and it's something that is growing something that like I see more people like love and being a part of. Um, I love that you mentioned the URLs and you have a, you have a Facebook group around the same. We do. So we have two, we have the private group and then we have a public group. So okay. if you want to just kind of follow us and kind of just keep an eye on what we're doing, uh, just jump on when it's just win W I R N. And then if you actually want to be a part of the group itself, the membership group where you're part of the training and the strategy sessions and things like that, then that's club win. I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, what have we not shared that you would like to add over the ne next, next couple minutes? Oh my gosh. I don't know, Cody. We've talked on and off for years now. We have. It's we've hard to about, believe. Yeah. We've talked about so much. Um, you know what I love about you is like, you're, you, you love everybody. You're super supportive. Like you care. Um, and you're just trying to do more to make this industry better and to help clients and agents, you know, and, and you do as good of a job as anybody you really do. So I appreciate that. It, it's a juggle. It's a, you know, it's a juggle, it's a struggle and it's a challenge. Um, but it's when I think sometimes we forget that we chosen and I know 100% every day I've chosen this and some days are better than others. Um, but as I said, from 8% stage, we choose every day to put our feet on the ground and choose joy and be positive regardless of the day. Because like the earlier today, I mean, we've had some shit show going on here, but here we are. I'm talking to you today. So, you know, yep. there may be bad moments in every day, but there's always lots of positive in every day. You just got to look at it from that point of view. And just always remember, we chose this. At the end of the day, we chose these clients. We chose to help them. And sometimes they're crazy. And we got to remember, though, but we chose to do this business. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. Mm -hmm. There's challenges. Let's be honest. I don't sure. care what you do. It, yeah, there's all challenges. All of them. Yep. That's yeah. such good advice. Um, if someone wants to learn, like connect with you on like a personal level or a company level or whatever, and they need some help. Um, and yeah, they're going to check out club win, but they're like, you know what? I'd love to uh, learn more about how Rebecca can help me and everything that she does. Where should we send them for that? Well, anybody can get a hold of me on social media. Just message me. Um, you can call the office, talk to Melissa. She'll get you on my calendar. Cool. Um, you can go to our website or just main website and you can put a request in there, which is KBI solutions, LLC.com. If you just Google cannonball insurance with a K, you'll find me. <laughs> yeah. Um, ultimately I'm easy to find Medicare wonder woman.com as a website. Um, you're I'm all, really easy to get a hold of all right? over social. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And I do answer and you know, th that's me answering, right? You're not just getting my assistant chiming in or something. That is me. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And if you text me at 1130 at night, and if I'm awake, I will respond to you. So don't be shocked when that happens. <laughs> Which is crazy and really cool that that's the case. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, you're amazing. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for being a part of 8% and being on stage. And then also for being on the YouTube channel once again. Thanks, Cody. I appreciate y'all so much. Love you guys and everything you do. We love you. Appreciate you. Okay. Go follow Rebecca Davis. See what she's doing. Check her out. 
and continue to listen to the Power Player Podcast. Thanks for hanging. See you on the next one. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Okay, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.